what would you cut if you just didn't have the time or the money to be able to keep going at the same pace that you have been going with your marketing? There are lots of reasons that you might need to cut something, whether it be the budget's been reduced, you've lost people on your team, or you just you're a one-person marketing department and you just don't have the time. You've got pulled into other projects, bigger projects, and the day-to-day is just falling apart. So today is part two of my episode with Michelle Tresmer, where we dig into the things that you should drop if you just don't have the time. Today, we're going to be digging into two new aspects of marketing that makes sense to cut if your schedule just is prohibited. It just doesn't work for you anymore. So stay tuned as me and Michelle agree on some things, argue about other things on what you should cut when you just don't have the time or resources. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Tiny Marketing. I'm Sarah Noel Block and I teach small marketing departments that are tired of feeling overwhelmed and under-resourced how to build and manage effective and efficient marketing strategies that work for them. Get ready, it's time to dig in and get a big impact with your tiny team. So the next thing on the list is cross-posting on all social media because you might as well. Let's talk about that. Yes. And I was surprised that you didn't push back on that one immediately. I do like repurposing, but if you don't have a, like, you don't have to be everywhere. And if your audience isn't there, who cares? (laughs) I'm not going to push back completely. (laughs) There is a huge difference between uh, repurposing strategically and cross-posting. So what I am against is when you go into your social media scheduler and you just check all the boxes to post the exact same freaking thing Mm -hmm. on all the channels or maybe just tweak it slightly, like that's not real content repurposing. That is just being, oh, it's recycling. (laughs) It is recycling. Oh, that's a great term for it. Yes. And I know it only takes a second. Like I get pushback all the time where the client, the one person marketer will say, but it only takes me 30 seconds to also post on Twitter. The issue is, is that you're not going to get any traction if you're not engaging. (laughs) You can't post and go and expect a reaction. Right. And that's, I mean, I know it sounds like just 30 seconds. It adds up so quickly to very real time and energy and distraction just doing it. Yeah. And realistically, if you're just posting, you're not going to build any sort of relationship. So one trick I always tell everyone is just set a 15 minute timer and respond to comments, comment on other people's posts, but only on the networks that actually matter for you. And if you're not, if you don't care enough to make that 15 minutes about a certain network, then it might not be one that you should be on. Yes. Oh, you know, and it's funny. I get the pushback the same that I do with those newsletters. It's, well, we want to be seen. We we don't want to look dead. And I get that a lot on social. Well, we want to look active. It's like, you're not active though. Yeah. You're just like billboarding. <laughs> yes. Billboarding. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's not the same thing as being active. Now I'm not against having the profiles for SEO. like bandwidth or (laughs) that's not the word I want to say, but I can't think of the word I want to say, but like real estate, SEO real estate, you have more of that front page. Yes. That that's a given. Like absolutely. Those need to be set up and consistent and represent you very well, but maybe you only post on them once a quarter or once a month. Don't do it for absolutely everything. It's not necessary for the networks you you're not on, obviously. Yeah. Like, for example, I don't ever use Facebook, but I have a like pinned post on it. Like, hang out with me on LinkedIn. That's where I spend my time. Yeah. Then that's perfect use of that. See how strategic you're being. And now you don't have to go waste your time posting on Facebook and dealing with spammy comments. (laughs) Yes, I do not. Yeah. One of my clients actually is getting a whole bunch of spammy comments right now. Like, What's going on? 
<laughs> Why are you spamming us about Bitcoin? Yep, it comes in waves, I find. Like, all right. It's all coming in reviews. Five stars. Join me in my oh. Bitcoin thing. I'm like, what's happening? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. SEO agency or consultant on monthly retainer. Let's talk about that one. This one's hilarious because I used to be a full stack digital marketing agency where people would pay me for these monthly retainers. <laughs> You're saying cut you. Yes, 100%. They drove me crazy because I would try to convince my clients, like, stop paying me every month. Like, what are you doing? Like, there's no point. Like, you don't have enough budget to really make a huge impact. So the monthly isn't necessary. Like, let's do a, like a SEO sprint every quarter. That's fair. I'm going to let my dog in. She's no, yeah. scratching at the door. Oh, Come on, Lou. <laughs> Welcome. She has to do a big stretch before she... Oh, oh. I love a big stretch. <laughs> oh. Okay, so would you say this is for like specific small things? What if someone has no marketing department and they're relying on someone to take care of the whole thing? Or when do you feel like retainers or monthly contracts make sense? If you have, I mean, I'd hate giving dollar amounts, but you need to have significant budget to really push SEO to its limits, like really leverage the crap out of it. That is constant tweaking, a lot of content development. Yeah. But do you hear what I just said? Content development. If you don't have a marketing team and you're generating content at all, I would rather you spend a little bit more for that writer who is trained in SEO so that you're continually doing ongoing SEO best practices no matter what. I agree with you. And I'm super confused when I'm working with a company, like, for example, a lot of times they'll contract me to create a strategy for them. So it's like a project. And they're telling me that they're working with an SEO company, but they haven't created any content. What are they doing every month? I am honestly confused. Like, what is happening? So this is the big red flag. And I'm always, well, I start out very kind with clients. And I explain that, hmm, that seems a little funny. Could I see their contract? Let me see what they've told you they're going to do every month. And I'm telling you, half the time, it's a one-time setup thing. And they're paying monthly? Monthly. And so when I push back, then I get myself, you know, I insert myself onto those calls to get, I want to see the statement of work. Like, what did you do for this month? Yeah. And usually yeah. within 60 days, they've fired the agency because they realize they're not doing anything. Oh my gosh. It's really not necessary. Like all of the on-site stuff, stuff, titles, descriptions, headings, everything coded properly, you're featured images, Google business profile, there is a lot of setup. Once that is in place, it is very little maintenance on the, I don't want to call it cheap SEO. It's not. It's like the, well, it's Pareto principle. It's the 20% generating 80% of your SEO juice, your goodness. You can bring all of that in-house and just train your webmaster, whoever's editing that, your content team, minimally, and then hire a heavy hitter every quarter or every six months to come in, double check everything, adjust the strategy a little bit. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because when I think of SEO, yeah, there's that technical setup. And um, but yeah, that all happens at one time. But the reoccurring things that impact SEO is content creation, link building, and at least the clients that I've worked with that had an SEO agency that they weren't doing that. So I was so confused. Right now, if you have a good budget, like let's say you have 10 grand a month for SEO, then that firm is absolutely going to give you killer content optimized for SEO. They're going to be doing link building for you. But for a smaller company that doesn't have that to dedicate, like you said, you're already going to be doing link building through your PR efforts, through your guest posting, like so just learn enough about SEO to leverage it. Yeah. And then you don't have to be an agency. Yeah. You can have that set up done and then create your editorial calendar around that SEO goal of yours. And then like guest blogging, guest posting or guest podcasting, 
all that jazz gets you so many good backlinks. Yes, I am excited to get more backlinks from you by doing this show. (laughs) And you will. Actually, some of my highest performing blog posts have you linked in them. (laughs) If you saw my LinkedIn post where I was like, I'm such an idiot, this post that's getting hundreds of views from Google a week, I just put a content upgrade on there, like a lead generator. It instantly got flooded with new subscribers. But the point of that story is that you're linked in that post. (laughs) I love it. See, so that just happened naturally. It's not, I don't do this because of SEO. I do it because it's value add for my prospects. Yeah. I just happen to know it is going to benefit SEO because I'm trained. There's that. And you're borrowing other people's audiences. We have the same audience. So the same people who would work with me would work with you. And I always recommend people, especially small, small businesses to partner whenever you could with other people who have mirror audiences to yours. It's the easiest way to grow. Yeah. Hands down. Absolutely. I'm sure that's not going to make me popular with some SEO agencies. And I do have colleagues who are amazing at SEO, but even them, it's like, mm, don't hire them for the, the easy stuff. Hire them for like the really advanced, cool strategies that are you know going to beat out competitors and hire them for the big stuff. You do the little stuff in-house. They can have a big impact. I have like a few of my clients have had amazing impact from SEO agencies, but the ones that don't, like if it's on a monthly retainer and you're not creating content, I don't understand what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're tweaking some content existing perhaps, or maybe, I mean, unless it's a huge dumpster fire when they do an audit and they have to rewrite, you know a thousand titles and descriptions, which sometimes happens. But again, it's a one-time bulk. It's a project in my brain. It's not an ongoing. I agree with you there. Maintenance. It would be like a one-time project for a setup. And then the maintenance would be on the content and PR side. As long as you're like working strategically together. Correct. Yeah. And then a quarterly audit or every six months, check for busted things on the site, just kind of health check and strategic reframing and you're good to go. Yeah. That makes sense. So SEO people out there, create some like VIP day or quarterly audit. (laughs) (laughs) We can recommend it. (laughs) Are you working on your content marketing, but it's not bringing in any leads? The problem might be your website. Find out the five website issues that kill content marketing efforts so you can fix them and quickly see the results with increased conversions, traffic, and good fit leads. Go to tinymarketing.me slash website mistakes to sign up. We go live on April 18th at noon Central Standard Time. See you there. Okay, let's see. What else? Blog posts you have on your list. Instead of doing one a week, do one a month. Let's talk about it. This is right up there with the newsletter where somebody has a KPI and they call it a KPI to produce one blog post a week for no other reason than they want to tell somebody else, well, we're doing one a week. We're doing it right. It's like, no, you're missing the point. Like, what is the intent behind the content? Let's be more strategic about it. And I am tired. Like I get on my soapbox. I'm really tired of junk and noise online with these crappy posts just for the sake of posting. Agreed. Agreed. So I would rather they stop for a second, create something of value that's more robust, really awesome for prospects and customers. And then of course your program repurpose the crap out of it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not repurposing, you're losing out on so much. And yeah, I agree with you that people create too much net new content. You don't need that much. If you did want to create weekly content, then it makes sense in like a podcast where you're doing episodic or if you're doing a series where it's like a season of certain type of content if it's being strategic and then you can reuse that or turn it into a hub and spoke model for to fill your SEO up. 
Now you brought up interesting when I say blog post, I don't care if you're talking about a blog post, a podcast, whatever. I also see that same problem with podcasts. They record their episode, they push it out on Buzzsprout, whatever it's out there. And then they do nothing with it. That is the exact same problem. Knock yeah. it off, do less original content and actually push it out the proper ways, like get eyeballs on it. Distribution matters. And it's the only way anyone's going to see it. It should, in content marketing, it should be a distribution first approach. Like how is this going to get to as many people as possible? And that's the reason I don't shut up about repurposing because it's basically just a distribution strategy. Yes. And you know, it's funny. I use the 20, 80% with content too. 20% of your energy on the original piece 80% of your energy on distribution. I love that. That makes complete sense to me. (laughs) Yes. Hopefully it does for the listeners too, because I don't want junk out there. The noise is killing me. Yeah, there's a lot. And I think that people are getting better about it though. I feel like we're going in more of a direction of quality over quantity. (laughs) No? (laughs) Well, I mean, I, I hope that that's the case. Chat GPT is definitely interesting because I'm terrified there's going to be 10x the noise of people just copying and pasting and publishing. And I mean, it's a great tool, don't get me wrong, but I am concerned a bit about the noise and the junk. And uh, You should be because I've seen some real junk with chat GPT. I am, we've talked about this on LinkedIn before that I'm okay with AI if you're doing it like really smartly. If you, is smartly a word? I'm not sure. (laughs) Um, Intelligently, that sounds more right. (laughs) Um, But basically, if you're going to be using AI, then you have to put in a lot of work into it. You have to have a really great outline so it's spitting out the right stuff. You have to go through it and change the hooks and closes of like every single paragraph so it matches your voice. Yeah. You have to go put in original quotes. You have to put in original research because the stuff that they're producing is garbly gook and the actual information they put in it, it doesn't match up. I was talking to someone the other day and the person who was in the quote that AI generated was not the person who actually said the quote. It's just making stuff up. So you have to really, really look at it. You have to give a shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. You do. You cannot depend on it. It's a tool so you can work faster. Interestingly, people use a lot of CRM systems, HubSpot in particular, I'll call them out, because they think the tool is going to do it all for them. And then they get real disappointed and upset when they actually have to learn how to strategically build an automation or this is how the scoring works. Like it's just there. Yeah. HubSpot's great because it is an all in one tool. However, you need to know how to use it and you need to know marketing really well in order to do it. I work with a lot of clients on their HubSpot setup. They have no idea how, how to use HubSpot, but they do like that. It's all in one place. Right. It's like handing me a toolbox and saying, here, go build a house. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have the the knowledge to use HubSpot in order to make it work. I personally, I love HubSpot though. And I love that you can so easily track all of your campaigns together. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. But yeah, any of those tools, they're just tools. Chat GPT, it's just a tool. Any of these AI content repurposing things, they're just tools. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. Yeah. You need to know what you're doing in order to use it effectively. And uh, chat GPT, I've seen some real crap. <laughs> I've seen some real crap from it. And people are acting like it's the second coming of Jesus. And it's it's not. <laughs> yeah, I actually used it. Um, I'm working on my dissertation for my doctorate. And it is amazing to use tools like that to help summarize big paragraphs. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, can you summarize this for me? And I reread it and consume it. And it is helpful in a lot of scenarios. Yeah, if you're using it strategically. (laughs) Yes, it is not going to earn a doctorate for me. Like, I have to do that. (laughs) Unfortunately. 
speaking of, my husband's on his last his last leg of it. He's in the dissertation part of it. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, the first three years of it were rough enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, good luck to him on that. He sees the light at the end, so he's happy. Oh, good. Let's see. I think that was the last one on your list. So did you have anything else that you that would make sense to cut? Um, you know, I would like to share just a rule of thumb. I teach my clients, and it's very, very simple. Two questions that you ask for everything you're doing, whether you're starting it new or have done it forever, and it's just the way you've done things. When you sit down to do a marketing task, a project, take a breath and ask yourself, is this going to get us closer to our goal? Is this going to move us forward or am I just doing it to check a box? If you think, Mm -hmm. oh yes, okay, this is going to help us get more revenue, whatever the goal is. Then the second question is, is this the best use of my time and money to move us forward? Yeah. Yeah, that is a really good point. When you're building out your goals for the quarter, you need to look at look at those goals when you're deciding on the strategies and the tactics that you're going to use in order to move those goals forward and think of them as like individual little campaigns, each one of those goals. Yeah. And if it's not going to move the the needle on it, does it yeah, make sense? Yeah, and even if it is going to move the needle maybe your energy in this other campaign or project is going to be better. So don't waste your time on the ones that aren't going to be as effective. Like just stopping and taking a breath and asking, like, am I doing this to check a box or am I doing this for a purpose? Yeah. Maybe prioritize those goals, like literally put numbers next to them and only allow yourself three for the quarter and then move the one, the next one to the next quarter And do it that way so you're not overwhelmed, especially those like solo entrepreneurs, those one person marketing departments that don't have the bandwidth to be able to take on a million goals. Yeah, we have limited time. I'm I'm all about the terms today. Opportunity cost, another economics term. When you do one thing, that means you're not doing this other thing over here. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're making a choice of where you're spending your time. Yeah, that's true. Smartest marketer I know. (laughs) I love my econ terms. (laughs) Have we talked yet about your new membership? I don't think so. It's so new. Well, let's share it. Let's talk. Yay. All right. So Foundations First Marketing Academy, I created it for those one-person marketing departments or departments of one, where it's generally one person who is in charge of all of the marketing activities. It's lonely. It's impossible to learn from coworkers because no one else is doing marketing. So it's really difficult to level up your skills just by osmosis in an office. So I built this, it's kind of an academy. It's a community where you have a sounding board. You get one-on-ones with me for a deep training. So if you need to build your social strategy or if you are struggling with SEO and you need like a crash course in how to do it, I do that one-on-one. So I take you where you that are. That is so nice. I know. it's all. I love <laughs> it. It just lights me up and it's the best job in the world. But yeah, you got the community. And then of course, a huge toolkit. I've been doing marketing for, oh my gosh, I'm so old, over 20 years now. And so all of these templates and guides that I've created over the years, I just put them all in a toolkit. So when it comes to creating um, yeah, your SEO strategy, your social strategy, or any of that stuff, there's just tools and guides and templates to use. Guys, take advantage of this. This is so brilliant. I know when I was a one-person marketing department, I would have killed for something like this. Yes, it is so fun. I don't know why I didn't do this years ago. (laughs) You were busy running an agency. I know. Yeah, well, no more. No more. Well, can you share the link to how people can sign up in... Well, you could just share it in this private chat right here, and then I'll grab it and move it over to our, oh, you have the doc open too. Why don't you share it in there? I have it for the show notes page. Sure thing. I'll just put it at the bottom. Academy. Done. It's easy. Academy.foundationsfirstmarketing.com. That is easy. Yes. Yes. And I got to do a little sneak peek of it, a behind the scenes of it. So I can tell you firsthand that it's 
so valuable. (laughs) Thank you. It is so fun. And I'm adding new content every day, which is the best. That is really fun, isn't it? I love creating new new little digital products. Yes. I'm going into it right now. Um, okay. Well, I guess that wraps that up. Is there anything that we missed talking about? I think we hit it all. Oh, look. We were both on the Top of Mind podcast. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me and Michelle today. And I hope that you got something out of this episode. By the end of my sentence right now, I'm hoping that you have a better understanding of what you should keep and what you should get rid of when you are running short on time, money, resources, because you don't have to do everything. Streamlined marketing works well. And a lot of times we get that shiny object syndrome where we hear that someone's doing something and we're like, yeah, me too. I want to do that too. But what you should be focusing on is what matters for your particular audience and what you're able to do with your time. So I hope you have a better idea of how to prioritize your time and get the most out of your marketing. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget that me and Michelle are hosting a webinar this month on April 18th, just a short ways away, and we will be digging into the five website mistakes that you're making that could be hurting your content marketing. So be sure to slide on down to the show notes page and check that out so you can be there live, ask us questions, and it's going to be a good time. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for joining Tiny Marketing. I help tiny marketing departments create consistent content that builds trust with their audience. Book done for you content marketing at sarahnoelblock.com. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review the podcast on your favorite podcast app. See you next time, friends.